Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range and a slight difference from the normal format today because I'm uh, working in, a, uh, in an active shop. There are people, there will be background noise, I'm sorry. Now uh, this particular piece here belongs to Matt, the owner of M426. It is his personal property, i.e. NFS for the benefit of the YouTube bots. So uh, this belongs to Matt, it is not going anywhere else. Anyway, um, it's a nice example of, a, of an unofficial Stem Mark II S, a silence Sten, and for those who get wound up about uh, silencer versus moderator versus um, uh, suppressor, tough. They call it a silencer, we're going to call it a silencer. Now, these were initially uh, made to a requirement from the French Resistance rather than the UK military. Uh, the, the French Resistance have been dropped an awful lot of Stens, they wanted something quiet for sneaky peeky stuff. And uh, this is the main version that came out of it. There's another version made for the uh, Special Operations Executive with a much bigger silencer on it, but um, that's not the topic for today. Here we're gonna talk about this one. Now, the first thing that, uh, that should be obvious is it's a Stem Mark II with a can on the front. Um, this has been refinished in some sort of enamel paint, gray enamel paint, kind of similar to um, the, uh, the, the, the military scorpions. Uh, it's an example of an actual British finish. It's uh, blued or parkerized and then coated in black sunkerite paint, so they were, they were black all over. Um, now, the back end of a real one is uh, the same as this. It's a, it's a Stem Mark II. There was nothing changed on the receiver externally. Uh, you see them with either the loop type butt or the T type butt. And then Moving up this end, this should be black. Um, it's entirely possible that it, that, that it was a Deco one and someone converted it. Anyway, let's have a bit of a look at how we know that this is not an officially British one. Now the first tell here is the serial number. This is an R serial number, which is from, from Enfield. So Enfield assembled this, uh, this basic gun. All of the official ones have a T serial number for Royal Ordnance Factory Thiel or F for Royal Ordnance Factory uh, for Zachary. So that's right out and it just simply says it's normal stem mark two on there hopefully you see that with the light now this has a clearly modified um, original standard breech block the the real ones have a much much lighter breech block on them and in fact i know that matt did this himself to uh, to try and get it to run um, but that and a standard length recoil spring are a tell as usual, the uh, collector grade book on the stand by Peter Laidler helps us out here. And you can quite clearly see the difference between a standard and a silenced one, and a standard and a silenced one there. So next up, we need to look for that acceptance mark there, the uh, broad arrow over D6 over C, and that should be uh, on the muzzle plug and occasionally on the rear flange of the silencer. So let us have a look. And unfortunately, it's plain. Uh, this does look like a genuine part, but it probably came out of uh, unissued, unused stock. Now, otherwise, this is constructed very, very similarly to the real thing. So we can unscrew the silencer, just like you unscrew the barrel nut on a normal stem. It comes away. That is far too well made for an original, shall we say. Um, you can't actually see in it with the camera, but the barrel is ported, but only at the back. And again, the book helps us here because you can see porting at the rear, which this one has, but porting at the front, it doesn't. But otherwise, in the absence of, a, of, the, of, of the real thing, I mean, this is, this is a pretty, 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 good, um, pretty good fake. I mean, uh, it shouldn't confuse anyone who has access to the book, um, but I like it. Um, other random things about this, things we know, it has the later hole modification for the push through push through safety on the cocking handle, like that to block the bolt in the forward position. And uh, we can also say that the receiver, oops, from the location of the hole there, we can say that this is a pre-April 1942 receiver, although the, uh, the trigger housing cover is later because of those dimples go with a bigger unthreaded hole up there. So this really should have uh, one attached with screws, but it doesn't. 
So if we put it back together fully, now there's a, there's a ratchet in there that that little catch held in with a powerful spring on the uh, magazine housing interacts with, and you can tighten that down. Breech block goes in like that. You need to pull the trigger to let it forward. Once we've found the hole, we can put it in, run it forward. Never just drop one in. You can uh, damage the, uh, the ejector. Sp spring has the collar there to interact properly with, uh, with that. So that goes in that end first. End cup like that. And there we go. So the safe condition so you can have a magazine on and uh, the bolt forward safely, keep crap out of the action, is like that. And then to fire it, you pull it back, cock it, and then fire it in automatic or semi-automatic mode, depending on the position of that there. So thank you very much to Matt and team at M426 for letting me come up here and film. I hope uh, it was at least vaguely interesting there wasn't too much background noise. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the patrons that uh, keep the channel chugging along and uh, see you again sometime. Bye.